Welcome to the Introduction to Engineering Practice Unit. Within this audio PowerPoint presentation, we'll give you a quick overview of this week's lecture content. This week's lecture notes are about introducing you to the unit and also giving you an overview of the number of topics that we're going to go through throughout the semester. So within this audio PowerPoint, I want to highlight a few of the key points uh, from this week's lecture notes. First of all, we're going to look at engineering practice. We're going to also look about look at communication. We're going to cover the unit learning outcomes. Look at the engineers with our borders challenge. Look at your assessments for this unit. Give a very light introduction to the engineering design process and also remind you to look at the pre-readings for your weekly tutorial on this week. It'll be on stakeholder analysis. So normally I pose the question of what do engineers do? It's a very difficult question to answer. Some of it's to do with the broad scope of engineering as a discipline. Um, the other one is it's not often not well understood what engineers actually do. Uh, some people say it's the application of uh, science and mathematics and, and to some degree that is correct, but there's a whole lot more to engineering. So on the uh, PowerPoint here, you can see uh, four pieces of engineering, which were all created by um, Australian engineers. You've got Wi-Fi, Sydney Harbour Bridge, uh, tilting pad thrust bearing, and the Snowy Hydro Scheme. So these are all major engineering feats um, created by Australian engineers, and they're indeed an application of science and mathematics but there's more to engineering and if I had to describe what engineers do uh, my definition would be that engineers solve challenges which change our social context and you can see with all these examples of um, pieces of engineering that they've changed the way we live our lives and a large part of what we want you to get out of this unit over the semester is understanding the uh, importance of how engineering is intertwined with our social context. So another important point for you to get out of this unit is there's a lot about engineering design and that's because engineering design is so fundamental to the the application and practice of engineering itself. So engineering design is the, the fusion of creative thinking, analytical techniques, technology, existing knowledge to bring about uh, our future state or change the way we live our lives. So in order to, to bring about change or create uh, new technologies, then we need to communicate um, our designs and our intent. So this is done either through verbal communication, written form, or often in engineering drawings as well. So these three forms of communication are going to be um, brought up and you're going to be assessed on it and you're going to get plenty of opportunities to practice these forms of communication throughout this unit. So this unit is about introducing engineering thinking and also the subjectivity of engineering, so showing and realising that there are multiple solutions to a given problem and we're going to try and find the, the best way and, and give some structure about um, coming up with the best solution to this particular problem. And the way we do this is by following general engineering practice and also um, we're going to apply this through solving an engineering design problem. So if we take a look quickly at the unit learning outcomes, so these are the uh, attributes that you should be able to display at the successful completion of this unit. First of all we want you to understand um, about looking at an engineering problem from a systems point of view, so that's at a holistic level um, understanding all the inputs and outputs to your particular design. You need to be able to identify and reflect upon your professional responsibilities as an engineer. You need to deploy information and literacy skills, so that's your communication skills. You also need to understand the academic standard that's required for literacy skills in, in writing and argument construction and also uh, referencing, so once again communication. Um, you need to be able to communicate your findings professionally in a visual and verbal 
presentation and also um, very much so in a, a report writing sense. A report writing is, is key in engineering. You need to be able to plan, manage and, and work within a team-based environment. So we, you're going to do that um, throughout the entire semester by working on a, a team-based project. You need to understand the environmental and social um, criteria within engineering. And you also need to be able to, to create some engineering drawings of simple structures and landscapes. And once again, you're going to do that um, through the application of your project within this unit. So why are we here as staff? Uh, we're here to hopefully impact upon your experience, instill um, our knowledge to you, encourage you, turn you hopefully into great engineers. Uh, we're also here to learn from each other. That's between students and staff. Um, and give you various skills um, that will help you throughout your career, um, throughout this course, and a lot of them, certainly from this unit, are applicable in other areas of your life as well. So to get down to it, uh, what you're going to be spending a large amount of your time doing during this unit is working on an Engineers Without Borders Challenge project. So the Engineers Without Borders uh, Challenge is a yearly project run by Engineers Without Borders. In this year it's within uh, the community of Bambui in Cameroon. You need to select a project as a team from the project listings we've given you. And these projects are um, about providing an engineering design solution to improve the lives of the people of this community. So these are real projects and they're also, this is a real community and these projects, um, some of them, Engineers Without Borders, will in fact uh, give to the community and they will set about implementing. So this can have a real impact. Um, please make sure you do visit the Engineers Without Borders challenge website and start to familiarize yourself with this uh, portion of the course because you're going to be spending a large part of your time working towards these projects. So an important note is that each of the projects um, on the Engineers Without Borders challenge project listing are different so you need to adapt some of the content throughout this unit to suit your particular project. Not all the content is specific for each one of the projects you're working on. And one of the uh, outcomes of that is you're going to have to make assumptions and also um, look at extrapolating data and, and finding data is one of the, the certain challenges behind working on these projects. So you need to um, be aware of that up front so that you can take that on board as you move through working on the projects. So you're going to work within teams throughout this semester. Um, we're going to put you into nominally teams of four uh, and working in a team it, it's good to realize that there's various theories behind teamwork and people have uh, studied teams to find out what makes the um, greatest likelihood of success for a team when they're uh, working towards a goal. And one person who's done this was uh, Meredith Belbin. He looked at teams and he found out there was diff nine different roles that um, people could take on whilst uh, being in a team which uh, added value to the team. So what we want you to do at this stage is just to be aware of these uh, roles and when you are in your teams to think about what are these roles, are they being properly fulfilled, uh, are people taking on the right roles to help the outcomes of your team. So the, to cover the roles quickly, there's three um, main categories of roles, action, thought and and people type roles and then there's three subcategories underneath. The minimum team requires a monitor or, an evalu or evaluator, a plant and an implementer and then also to have um, the other roles uh, filled up uh, by extra team members. So it's important for you to, to reflect every now and then when you're working in within your teams, especially if things aren't 
going uh, ideally to plan and look at who's taking on these roles at different times and, and are you lacking one of these roles at a particular moment and then taking action to, to change your behaviour to perhaps fill some of the roles which are lacking. So that's what we really want you to be doing at this stage is thinking about these roles, uh, look at the lecture notes, read the background about the Belbin type roles and keep that in your mind as you're working throughout the rest of the semester. So down to assessments. There's seven different assessments, so it might seem like a lot in the beginning, but a lot of them um, are built on each other. So the first assessment here is a design brief. You undertake that at an individual level. Um, and essentially you're rewriting your Engineers Without Borders project, um, framing the problem statement, looking at the background, doing some investigation, and then writing a, a design brief on that. You then undertake a oral presentation to give us an update of, of where you are at, at on the working on your project as a team. That's the second um, assessment. Uh, you've got some online quizzes which cover the, the lecture content throughout the course. Then you have your first project report. So that's building upon your design brief and that's where you come together as a team and you um, come up with various design concepts for your particular uh, project you're working on. And then finally you, you deliver a, a final report which encapsulates your uh, final design as a team. You do a presentation on that. And then the, the last assessment item there, number seven, is where we look at uh, how you interact as, as a team throughout the semester. And we do that by monitoring uh, the minutes of your meetings or the, the record of your, your meetings that you have as a team as you go throughout the semester. So we follow the engineering design process throughout this course uh, and that starts with firstly identifying the problem and you can see here there's a, um, a flowchart on how you go about following the engineering design process. So you identify the problem, look at criteria and constraints, brainstorm possible solutions, generate ideas, explore those possible abilities, then we need to select one, we build a prototype and then we refine the design. and um, start again if we have to. So this unit follows this general process and you'll see that in the content of the unit we follow this general engineering design process. So looking at the previous slide uh, the engineering design process seems fairly linear and, um, and straightforward when you, you're shown the uh, process to go through. Unfortunately it's a little bit more complex than that and there's a number of reasons behind why it's more complex um, but probably the biggest reason is we've got uh, competing interests. Not only is, uh, do we have to look at an engineering project from a feasibility or, or technical standpoint, and that's complex enough in itself, but we have these two other big areas of um, competing interests, and one being uh, business interests, or we need to be uh, profitable in how we conduct our um, business, and we also need to look at the, the human impact and, and social and environmental um, impacts of projects. So it makes it quite a complex um, process. So the weekly schedule for this unit, it's going to consist of a weekly uh, lecture pack, which is going to be a 10 minute audio PowerPoint presentation such as this. You're going to have written lecture notes for you to look through and then also additional readings that link in the lecture notes for you to follow. You're also going to have a weekly tutorial which is going to consist of a two hour collaborate session where you can ask questions um, of the staff members, we can interact as a, a class and uh, within your teams and there's going to be some pre-readings for you to do before these tutorial sessions. So to give a brief introduction to this week's tutorial pre-reading, it's on stakeholders so go to views and find the pre-reading on stakeholders. From this pre-reading you need to understand that a stakeholder is anyone who can influence or have influence over a project. Uh, you need to understand that we have to interact with stakeholders to ensure uh, the success of an engineering project and the desired outcome of this is we provide the best solution for all involved. All our stakeholders uh, get benefit out of implementing a particular project. So to wrap up for this week, uh, we want you all to do very well within this unit. So my six top tips to succeed would be number one, you need to spend time 
on this unit. Uh, you need to take ownership of your own learning to so make sure that you um, are asking questions. Be active, that leads from the, the previous one. Uh, it's not always easy to ask questions, be active, be enthusiastic, but you need to do that. And to do that, you need to push yourself and you also need to show leadership in your learning. Uh, generally, that's making sure you're taking initiative and then finally you need to make sure you spend some time planning for what you're going to do so that you can end up succeeding.